In this episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with Christian Kyle, Managing Director and Head of Product Strategy and Client Service at FinCAD. FinCAD is a leading provider of advanced valuation risk solutions for derivatives and fixed income analytics. In this new format of the podcast, we will separate the conversation into two parts. First, we're going to talk with Christian about his career and quant careers in general. Then we will break down a specific topic. At this time, it will be the VIX, the volatility index that is well known but perhaps not well understood. Christian, welcome to the FinTech Files. Thanks a lot for inviting me, George. Could you please tell us a little bit about your role at FinCAD? FinCAD is a leading provider for derivative and fixed income analytics. That means that effectively we, we provide quantitative infrastructure to price simple derivatives such as swaps, vanilla options, all the way to very structured products. And my role at, at FinCAD is to look after the product strategy, where are we heading, what are market trends, how how do we need to develop our product to stay ahead of the competition. But I'm also responsible for the client services department, which is looking after any of our client engagements from assisting our sales team in pre-sales to implementing projects, implementing our software with our clients, to looking after post-state success of our clients, which is the support and operations department. Right. And I see on the website, it seems to be working with a lot of uh, usually very large institutions, from banks to hedge funds. Is it this kind of uh, guys that you're serving? Well, basically, anybody having derivatives in their book in the financial domain is a potential client or partner of ours. So we're working from individuals, corporate individuals, corporate institutions, which only use a, a few derivatives to, to have hedge their balance sheet activity all the way to, to leading hedge funds and investment banks, which, which use our software for very pre-trade decision-making risk analysis and hedging. If you could tell us your background, I can see on, on LinkedIn that you have a PhD in mathematics. And can you tell us a bit about that and how you got into finance? So my journey into finance is about 20 years ago. And back in those days, a lot of people entered the domain of quantitative finance from a PhD uh, background in mathematics and physics. Part of which is the, the fact that back then the, the, there wasn't the formal education in financial mathematics, quantitative finance, and, and definitely a lot less than what we've seen today. So I started mathematics unknowingly that I would actually end up as a quantitative analyst. What drives you to get it fine? Is it the career perspective? What's the... Both in terms of being limited by an academic career in, in pure mathematics. But in, in my personal situation, it, it was really a, an opportunity to go into the field of of quantitative finance. The, the supervisor of my master thesis was a close contact with Avian Amro at the time. I was lucky enough to write my master thesis w with Avian Amro. That was effectively the stepping stone for a PhD in this field. What, how has it evolved since is when you joined the field? The first thing I would advise everybody aspiring for a career in quantitative finance is that if, if numbers are not your thing, if formulas are not your thing. If you don't, if you don't want to work with data, then quantitative finance is not the right career path for you. But definitely the quality and choice of formal education has grown significantly over the last couple of years. There are programs in computational finance, quantitative finance, financial mathematics. So definitely what can choose to pursue a formal education in the field. The, the one thing that's quite critical f for me is that there, there is a discrepancy between what you learn. As in any field, there's a discrepancy on what you learn through formal education compared to what the day-to-day -day job activity will be. And, and in particular, joining the financial institutions, the, the selection criteria are more often that, that you will find that sort of the, you measure against your skill your talent and, and potential that, that outright educational background. Well, how, how does it work for your recruitment today as you recruit a lot of people who will work as what we call quants or data scientists? It's quantitative finance is a term very widely used across the industry. 
And they are the quantitative analysts that sit on south sides, trading floors, writing quantitative libraries in C plots. They are quants in hedge funds, s- supporting various forms of trading activity, trying to get an edge on the market. And then there are also quantitative analysts in various forms across risk departments, advisory roles, and so forth. The skill and also the soft skill required for various positions varies quite significantly uh, across this entire spectrum. At FinCAPS, and for uh, the, the, the quantitative analysts working within client services, client communication is a core aspect of day-to-day activity, makes up a, a, a key part of the selection criteria, which at the same token, somewhat lessens the burden of deep technical skills, or which requires us to strike a balance of communication skills as well as technical education. When we hire into roles of financial engineering or quantitative analyst, what is key, what, what we're typically looking for is a, a technical degree to a master level in math, physics or finance. Yeah, very interesting because I think there's a maybe slightly antiquated pictures of the quad and the trading desk and the hedge funds. But in fact, what you're telling us is that there are so many more career opportunities. Uh, there are absolutely fantastic career opportunities and, and very rewarding. Not everyone will be a quant in, in a, to, writing programs for a hedge fund. I, I would definitely echo that working. I mean, it's, it, it's also an element of where do you see your career growing? Where do you see even your work-life balance starting when, when you're coming out of university? And the term quantitative analyst is a little bit of an artificial term. The, the, the job specification grow within the industry 20, maybe 30 years ago. PhDs hired from a math and physics background because these were the people whom you could teach the, the skills and the principles of quantitative finance with far less institutionalized. So would you consider, let me just ask a hypothetical example, if someone was applying for a job and perhaps had, well, obviously done some math, but mainly in terms of this quant aspect or data aspect had been maybe following online courses and there's so many as data, et cetera. That's something that you would still consider at FinCAT, for example? I'm a great fan of hiring for talent at potential. And what I'm looking out for a candidate is a curiosity in mathematics, the, the skill in, in mathematics to learn new things, but I'm, I'm far less better to, to go through a formal set of questions and, and just find out with the learned expertise matches what I'm looking for in particular for entry level applicants. I would like to create a, a positive note so that I, I'm excited about math and what I want to say is that it, if you're excited about math and that, that quantitative finance could absolutely be uh, a subject for you to be successful in many ways. Great, Christian. Thanks so much for the advice. And we'll conclude this first part on that.